Hello guys. So in this video, we will talk about something called as regularization. So this is a technique which we use to avoid overfitting in machine learning models. Okay. So in order to understand regularization, I will just quickly recap what do we mean by overfitting. Okay. So overfitting is something where our machine learning model will fit perfectly well on the training data, but it fails to generalize well on the unseen test data set. So how do how does the overfitting look like? So let's say we have some data points. Let's say we are dealing with linear regression and we have some data points like this. Okay. So not perfectly linear, but yeah, this is how the data is spread. So if we train our machine learning model, okay, so let's call it as training data. And if the model is overfitting, this is how the model will look like. So the data points. When they are spread like this, our machine learning model will tend to predict the values and fit to the training data something in this way. Okay. So, generally, this will be a result of having our hypothesis as a higher order polynomial. Okay. So, we all know that we have parameters to learn and the features associated with them. So, generally, we will be facing with overfitting if we have higher order polynomials in our hypothesis. Okay. So, when I say higher order polynomials, it looks something like this. So, it can be square theta 4 x power x 2 power cube theta 4 x 2 to the power 4 something like this. So, these are all higher degree polynomials, right? So, we call this overall hypothesis as a higher order polynomial. Okay. So, because of these stuffs here, x square, x2 cube, x2 to the power 4, we tend to overfit the training data. But if we try to test this particular trained model on our test data, so let's say we have our test data something like this, and these are the unseen data, okay. So our model may predict something like this, okay. So this prediction is completely off completely off from the reality right so these are the real data points which we had to predict but our model had predicted this much this thing on our test data set so this is the classical case of overfitting okay in this case we call our model as having high variance okay so i have explained model bias and model variance in my earlier video please go and check that to have a complete understanding but this is the general scenario wherein we call our machine learning model is having high variance or in other words, our machine learning model is overfitting. Okay. So, whenever it is overfitting, the MSC or the mean squared error that we have, MSC on train data will all, always or almost will be equal to 0. But the same MSC on test data will be, some, will be of some high value. So, much, much greater than 0, I can call it as some high value, right? So, the MS, the difference between MSC on train and MSC on test data is, so I will just represent it as a difference, it will be very, very high, very high, okay? So, this is the scenario wherein we call our machine learning model to be overfitting. So, how? we can overcome this. So, in order to understand that, let me quickly write the cost function of our linear regression. So, our cost function is 1 by 2 m summation i is equal to 1 to m the predicted value minus actual value. Okay. This is squared. Okay. So, we want this to be minimum. Correct. And we apply gradient descent and we go on modifying the values of our parameters theta so that our overall cost is minimum okay so since we have our hypothesis right this y hat this is also can be represented as h theta of xi correct so this will give us a predicted value since our hypothesis is now a higher order polynomial this anyway will result in minimum cost on training data Okay, so nearly it will be equal to 0, but the cost on test data will be much, much higher. Okay, so in order to understand the regularization, 
so we do or or in order to apply the regularization we do a little modification with respect to this cost function okay so j theta is equal to 1 by 2 m summation i is equal to 1 to m so this part doesn't change h theta of x i or you can call it as y hat i the predicted value minus y i the actual value square plus so what i do lambda by 2 m summation j is equal to 1 to n theta j square okay so this particular part here is called as a regularization term okay the term here is called as regularization term and the new symbol or the new uh, variable lambda okay so this is read as lambda is our regularization parameter okay so it is a regularization parameter so this is a hyperparameter hyperparameter which we have to choose carefully in order to avoid our overfitting so how does this particular lambda associated with the summation over the learnable parameters that is theta will help us in reducing the overfitting so we will try to understand that but before doing that let me simplify this particular equation here okay so i will write the equation as i will take 1 over 2m as a common term here right so i can do this as like this 1 over 2m a big square bracket i can say i is equal to 1 to m h theta of x i minus y i squared plus lambda since i have 2m as common outside i don't have to write it here summation j is equal to 1 to n theta j square okay so this is our regularized cost function for linear regression so this is called as a regularized cost function and this is with respect to linear regression okay so now we will see how this will avoid in overfitting so in order to understand this just understand this particular equation of a straight line y equal to mx plus c so in machine learning terms our hypothesis is equal to theta 0 x 0 plus theta 1 x 1 so here the x 0 is always 1 so we can simplify it as theta 0 plus theta 1 x 1 correct so here theta 1 or m right so this is a slope of a line if we have a straight line if we are dealing with perfectly straight line in a linear, linear regression we are having this particular equation and theta 1 will represent the slope correct but in higher order polynomials we will have so many multiple slopes associated with it right so just think of our uh, higher order polynomial equation theta 0 x 0 plus theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2 plus theta 3 x 2 to the power 2 plus theta 3 x 2 to the x 2 cube and so on right so these in a simple linear regression this was a single slope or single parameter that we had with us but in a higher order polynomial we have multiple parameters to learn you can for understanding purpose you can treat this as a multiple slopes okay just think it as multiple slopes we are not fitting a straight line anymore okay so we are fitting a curve something like this as i shown as i have shown here in this graph okay so now that we have introduced this particular lambda okay how this will help in minimizing this guys just think our aim or our goal is to have this minimum correct so i will write it again this must be minimum correct i is equal to 1 to m y hat minus y i plus lambda summation j is equal to 1 to n 
theta j square. So, if you look at this particular regularization term now, since we have to minimize this overall cost function, if we choose let us say a very high value for lambda, let us hypothetically let me choose 1000 as value associated with lambda. Okay. Now, this 1000 will be associated with all the theta j's. Okay. 1 to n. So, all the this 1000 will be associated with all the theta j's that is learnable parameters. So, effectively this will result in a very large number. Okay. Very large number. Now, in order to achieve the minimum cost function, we will end up choosing very small value to theta. Right. Small value to theta j's. So, that effect of 1000 into theta j's will be a small value. But can we choose this 1000 as our regularization value, value for lambda? No. In most of the cases or in generally, we will not go with such a high value with regularization parameter. Why? Because in a hypothesis, in a linear regression or just think of a regression, we do not actually know which parameters are resulting in overfitting. Okay, so we really do not know which of out of all these n parameters, right? So if you guys have seen my videos on notation, the parameters will be represented with help of theta j, correct? And theta 0, theta 1, theta 2 up to theta n. So, out of these n parameters, we do not actually know which of these parameters are contributing to the overfitting, correct? So, in order to avoid a general overfit, uh, avoid a general overfitting, what we do? We end up penalizing every theta here. We end up penalizing every parameter, okay? Every theta except theta 0. Why? So, if you pause and think for a minute, theta 0 is associated with x0, okay? And this x0 is always 1, this won't change at all. So, we will exclude theta 0 from penalizing, okay? Exclude from penalizing. So, that's why you guys would have noticed me writing it as summation over j equal to 1 to n theta j square. So, this j is starting from 1 not from 0 because we are not penalizing the theta value, right? And I have also explained how this lambda associated with theta will result in penalizing the parameters associated with all the polynomial terms in the hypothesis, correct? So, in this way, we can actually reduce the overfitting. But internally what is happening, you can think it as it is trying to reduce the slope. Okay. So, it is generally trying to reduce the slope. So, if we have a very high slope, introducing this lambda theta j square will reduce the slope and it will generalize the model in a good way. What would happen after we use this particular regularized cost function okay, to the MSC? So, what would happen? So, generally in overfitting scenario on training data set, it will be equal to 0, nearly equal to 0 during overfitting, right? But after we use regularization, after regularization, this will not be nearly equal to 0, it will have some positive value it will have some value associated. Generally, you can see when we try to avoid overfitting, MSC on training data will tend to increase a bit. Okay, But this will help us in achieving a good MSC on test data. Okay, right? So, this will not be equal to 0, but this will not be even equal to a very high value. Okay, So, we tend to equate these things j theta on train we always want this scenario j theta on test 
we want msc is on train and test set to be similar so if msc on training data is nearly zero but we have a high value on test data we call it as overfitting so in order to avoid that in order to achieve this particular scenario we will introduce a term called as regularization term right so this term here right here is a regularization term and this particular regularization is called as ridge ridge and since we are using it with regression we call it as ridge regression okay so this is called as ridge regression how does lasso regression look like so instead of having squared term associated with the regularization parameter lambda our cost function would look something like this 1 over 2m summation i is equal to 1 to m y hat of i minus y i right plus lambda summation j is equal to 1 to m theta j okay so this is our lasso regression right so this term right here is a again a regularization term and this particular type of regression called as lasso regression okay so there is just a single difference we do not have square here associated with lasso regression with the ridge regression we have square associated with it okay so hope you guys have understood how regularization works and how it helps to overcome the overfitting problem with respect to machine learning models so the same thing can be applied over to logistic regression as well so the equations doesn't change much in fact if you just take treat this as y hat or hypothesis ignoring the inner mathematics of hypothesis with respect to logistic regression the equation looks same okay with respect to cost function and also the regularized cost function of logistic regression and linear regression so hope you guys understood something here if you guys have any questions please post it in the comment section i'll be happy to help you so till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye